How's it going guys? Nick from Subi Mods back again to do another installation on our 2021 STI. Uh, following suit with the lighting product series we're doing, we are gonna be putting in the Molded Innovations V3 Cyclops. This is the newest version from Molded Innovations, but it's not new to their brake light line card. Molded Innovations offers about four series of lights now from everything uh, 2011 WRX STI up into the new 22 WRX. But today we're going on the uh, 2021 STI. This will cover 2015 to 2021 WRX and STI. So for all of you who own one of those cars, follow along while we go through it here. All right, so diving in here, we're gonna start with the product itself. Uh, Molded Innovations offers pretty much everything you're gonna need to get this installed right off the bat. Uh, it's a great kit in the sense that everything you need is in the box and then the tools you need are very simple as well. So we'll kind of just start with the packing here. I'll lay everything out and then we can go through it one by one. Put that on the ground, Put that. So starting off, these are plug and play. It's literally one connector to the tail light, one into the brake light, one into that other side of the connector and boom, you're wired up. Older kits, different manufacturers kits, you used to have to splice, T-tap, all that stuff. We're not doing that. Easy, plug and play. All the hardware you need, some zip ties to make it clean, and then the bracket are good to go. The adapter we spoke about here. So onto the brake light here. We'll just take the plastic paper off. Pro tip, save that. We're gonna need that for later. So this is the Cyclops version. It has this double circular halo style. This is the DRL, the outside lens here. This will illuminate, and then the center will be your brake light. We're debuting the all red version. So red base, red bars, and then a clear lens here. I think it looks awesome. It's a cherry red. It's a very deep color. Will match nice with the taillights we chose. So let's dive into it. All right, so as easy as the brake light is to install is really built upon the fact that you don't need a lot of tools. So we're gonna do a quarter inch drive socket, 10 millimeter here on the edge of that. We'll go with a deep socket just cause it's a little bit easier to kind of get that back spacing you need at points. Uh, just a simple flathead screwdriver. Uh, we're not gonna use any complicated pick tools or door panel tools, anything like that. Just an old fashioned screwdriver. And then just any type of light you have to be able to kind of get some illumination underneath the car. Obviously not everyone's gonna be working uh, on a lift in a well lit place. So anytime you can get yourself a little more visibility, gonna help that installation go smooth. Let's jump into it. So if you've done any taillight installation or anything really in the trunk, you'll know we'll have to remove a couple pieces to get access to the taillight harness. We're gonna go off the driver's side taillight harness. So let's start with getting some things out of the way. Don't need that. Kobe. And then basically we're gonna start by removing this plastic piece here. Uh, three clips hold it in. Be very careful with these. These clips have a tendency to break. And then also this has some feet on the back of it as well that depending on how you'll put it back in, you may fold them over. And it's just a big pain if you do it. And then lastly, we'll step around to this side. You'll take this fender liner out. This plastic piece in the center needs to come out before you can actually get this whole fender liner removed here. So we'll dive into it here with the screwdriver. <laughs> So we're gonna start with the adapter here. Just start by unclipping the taillight connection here. It's the big connector, there's only one on this side. And what you're gonna do is you're basically just gonna intersect those connections. This is basically just a simple jumper harness, male to female, female to male. And then we have the Molden Innovations extension harness. What I like to do, I like to put this end here that has none of the split loom and braiding towards the side of the vehicle as that's gonna be inside the chassis of the car. So we'll just give that a quick connect there. Hear that audible click. And then from here, you are pretty much done in terms of wiring. This is the hardest part of it. 
Now, what we're gonna do is then we're gonna move into how we run this wire down into the lower compartment of the bumper here. All right, so what we're gonna do next, you're either gonna grab uh, any sort of like a simple punch tool maybe, or even a box cutter, and we're basically gonna make just a small hole, no bigger than the head of this connector here, and that'll allow us to run the actual brake light wire all the way down. A punch tool like this actually works perfectly so that you still get a good seal. You don't want any exhaust fumes coming up into the trunk or anything like that. Right, let's get this going. All right. And then you'll just basically feed this down into the lower portion of the bumper here. So you'll basically just want to leave enough slack so that when you pull it tight on the taillight side that you're able to have it run straight down and across like an L and that should allow you to get enough clearance to put back the trunk trim and everything like that. So now we're going to go underneath the car and get the actual light installed. All right. So now that we have the uh, car up in the air, sorry to those who are going to be working on the ground, but we're going to work smarter here because we do have the lift. Uh, you're basically going to want to get underneath the vehicle and kind of get your hand up underneath this center here and then you can push. It does take a little bit of force, but once you do, that will just release and then you can free the dead panel. Like we talked about in the intro, we saved the plastic from the initial unboxing to be able to reinstall on the light. The reason is, is there isn't a ton of room underneath here where you actually kind of have to get uh, your hands and everything. And sometimes when you get this brake light in there, things can happen. It can slip out, you can end up scratching it, things like that. So I always recommend put that plastic back on there, save yourself some headache, and then we're gonna basically get this in and then we're gonna come underneath the car and we'll show you guys how the bracket is supposed to go here. Once you're underneath the car, we're gonna give you a little bit of a pro tip to help aid in kind of getting the uh, rear valance of the bumper out a little bit, give you some space to get your hands in. There is four push clips, so you'll see one right there, another one, another one, and another one. You'll notice we already removed them. These are going to be likely some of the hardest clips to get out. They're underneath the car, so they pick up all the dirt, grime, everything like that. I'd recommend hitting them with a little bit of WD-40 or some penetrating lubricant just to be able to uh, ensure you don't break them. But once you have them all out, you'll find that you pretty much have unrestricted access to the back of that bumper there. Uh, maybe a friend, a uh, significant other can help you kind of hold that just because it can get a little tight to get your hand in there. But once you have it, we can proceed with installing the bracket. All right, so before we get the bracket and get that installed, we're gonna start with this uh, folded over kind of simple clamp style nut here. This is actually gonna go on the outside. So this would be passenger side. And it's basically gonna go with the head of this clamp towards the inside there. And it's gonna go with the folded edge to the front of the car, which will end result in something that looks like that. That's gonna give us one of our mounting points for the bracket itself to the bumper. We'll then grab our bracket and two of the 10 millimeter nuts, or excuse me, the two 10 millimeter bolts. We will then have the bracket in this orientation here. Driver's side is gonna be up. We'll slide that in here. And just be sure to make sure while you're holding that there, you grab the front of the brake light as well. You don't wanna push it out while you're installing it. Move the wire out of the way and then All right, so now that you have both of the 10 millimeter bolts attaching the bracket to the light itself, that's what your finished product will look like. The feet there will be basically 
kind of butting up right against the edge of the plastic and then we'll move on to the side. So again, the last 10 millimeter bolt here will be on the passenger side. All right, so you'll find that sometimes this uh, wing nut we attach there sometimes can uh, kind of detach. If anything, just grab that simple uh, straight pick tool you had and just kind of re give it a little push to get it all even there. And then that's all tight. And then the last one is your push clip right on the upper side of the other brake light. That's just a simple in and clip. Now, once everything's in, grab your 10 mil and start tightening them up. All right, so now we're just gonna grab that wire here. Here is our power connector that we ran down through the bumper. Give that a little connection. Get that up out of the way. And then we'll come back around to the vehicle, front of the vehicle. And before we finalize and tighten everything up, we're just gonna make sure that the brake light is centered in the bumper there and give it its final height and in. All right, so now you've got everything connected, mounted up, you're good to do that final peel, show that light off, and then start putting back in those push clips. Like I said, if you didn't hit these with uh, any WD-40, you can also soak them while you work as well. That's another little tip so that on the way in, they are all good. All right. And this is all up to you guys on how much you wanna clean up the wiring. I'll usually just grab this wire again, do a little bit of wire tie cleanup just to make sure that everything stays in its place. You don't have any loose wires. You can pull the excess back up into the trunk and wire tie that off to the side and you are pretty much done. All right, so now that the trunk's back together, the wiring's done, all the clips are in, lights secured to the bumper, we're gonna get to test it. So let's go lights on. So like I said in the beginning, that Cyclops bar illuminates that bright red Looks awesome when you combine it with an aftermarket set of taillights. Let's go uh, brake light. Now the cool thing, uh, you'll get eight hyperblinks on its default mode. The next step, what's also kind of the big feature of these is you'll be able to have that go uh, basically away if you'd like, if you want something simpler. To do that, it's simply uh, basically foot on the brake and a couple quick flicks of the actual headlight on and off. So we'll do that here, but we're gonna pull over to the front of the car so you guys can watch actually how to program that. All right guys, so we just finalized the uh, last couple steps of the V3 Cyclops brake light. It is all in, it looks awesome, and again, if anyone has any interest in seeing other installation videos, simple general tips, tricks, things like that, put it below in the comments and we'll do our best to make it happen. This video is actually a question from another customer. So we're trying to keep this series rolling for you guys, put more content out on a consistent basis. So please like, follow, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, all of them. We're active on everything. We love to hear the comments. We appreciate everyone. And again, thank you. Have a great day.